Good talk. Oh, I see what you did there. Good talk. Lift your hands, baby. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Good Talk with Good People. Today I have a fantastic guest. She has a new special out called Please Notice Me. It's on Amazon Prime and her name is Kim McVicker. Thank you so much yeah, for coming me. on. That is you. Um, so I just watched the Please Notice Me special. You did? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Why is that funny? <laughs> I just that you just like that you were like, I'm going to talk to this chick, so I should watch her show, <laughs> which makes sense. But I, well, no, I mean, it's cool because, you know, I've obviously seen you in the comedy scene. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I follow you on Instagram. So when I saw um, that you were filming a special, I feel like I kind of saw the lead up to it mm -hmm. as well. So I was actually really excited to see like one of, you know, the, the comedians I've seen in the scene actually like drop something. Um, I haven't necessarily had that experience yet. So when it came out, I was like, oh my God, I have to watch this. Cause it's like, I don't know. It's kind of this weird merger of celebrity. You know what I mean? Like before <laughs> being in LA, like yeah. I would watch these specials and I'm like, these are celebrities, you know what I mean? And it's like, I feel like I'm seeing a celebrity bloom, which is bizarre. <laughs> Fancy. I feel so fancy. You are fancy. And it was a very dynamic special. I mean, I, first off, I'd recommend anyone who hasn't seen it already, definitely go check it out. Um, you have dancing, there's singing, there's obviously the giggles. Um, I, I guess, what, what was your process in doing this thing? Like, what made you go, okay, now I'm going to make a special. And also, there will be, like, amazing <laughs> dance numbers in it. That's such a cool combo. Um, okay. What made me do it was, uh, a company asked me to do it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I was approached by a label. I was actually approached by two different labels. Um, and so I had, uh, I think I had a, tw I have a 20 minute out somewhere, um, through another company. Um, and then, uh, that led to doing more shows and, you know, it's like the, the baby steps towards moving up in the comedian com comedian in the comedy world yeah. and then uh comedy dynamics at you know we were talking and they were like oh we should you should do an hour and then the cool thing about comedy dynamics is they let me run with whatever i wanted to do um and so people with comedy dyna dynamics typically have like a few different types of contracts um from what i'm aware of of other friends who've done specials sometimes comedy dynamics comes on before you even shoot sometimes you shoot your own thing and then you sell it to them. There are several different ways. And that's not just comedy dynamics. There's several different w ways of doing it. They were on board in the beginning. Uh, and the reason that I really liked them is because they were cool with me dancing. Uh, <laughs> I was a backup dancer for years. And so I felt like with my first hour, I wanted a show. I really wanted to, sh I didn't want to just be a comedian standing there and talking um, because even the most amazing comedian to me, I get bored 20 minutes in every time. It never fails. I just am like, oh, I'm already thinking about laundry or something stupid. Um, so I wanted like commercial breaks within it. And then for me, dancing is the best commercial break, right? Turned out not to be for me because uh, I was exhausted. Um, but also I had surgery about a month before we taped uh, where they took out the nerve in my ankle and I had only been walking for two days when we filmed. So it was like, and I had never worn heel. I was wearing heels in the special. I hadn't worn heels yet until the day of. So it was like really wrapped up, really cortisone shotted. And I was just like, like we had to change some of the dances the day of. Cause I was like, I can't do that. <laughs> like normally I could, but I was like, I, I've been walking for two days. I'm not going to like, so it was a, it was really interesting. Cause I refused to push the date of the special. Um, because I had to have surgery. It wasn't a choice. I hurt my ankle running. How did you hurt? Oh, just running? Did yeah, you I'll never jog again. It, uh, or... it was like the first time I ever jogged. I don't remember <laughs> hurting it while I jogged. Uh, it was Runyon and Runyon just killed me. Uh, I was just jogging, not even, I never fast. Uh, and something like popped in my ankle and I had like a big bubble in it and I didn't know oh, what it was for a few days. No. And I'm used to like feet injuries through, I used to be a dancer yeah. again. So like a lot of, but it was just different. And then I went in and they were like, yeah, we got to cut this out. At first they thought it was broken because I couldn't walk on it. And they did all these x-rays and MRIs and they were like, no, no, no. There's like a, your nervous got a, something like grew inside it. I forget what it's called. Oh, and they no. had to cut that out, but it was inside my nerve. So they had to take out part of my nerve and now it's growing back right now. So it's like a weird, it's just weird. 
yeah a whole weird thing yeah it's a, it's a really weird timing thing too because it, it wasn't sparked by you running it was already something that was happening and running just kind of like takes you maybe. off to it probably maybe? i have no idea yeah it could be wear and tear um okay. let's pretend to be medical professionals so mm-hmm. this is so small- in your medical in your, <laughs> i like that yeah in my medical experience as a doctor <laughs> um no that's so insane though i would have never guessed you were injured in watching you dance if you that's- slow-mo the video where like my ankles are in the air you can see one boot is like baggy and like crunchy and the other one is so full because it's just like cast inside of it. So like, you can tell if you really look for it. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a fun little thing, but I refuse to change the date because I wanted to shoot this. So, um, it's not in this special. It will be in, I have a contract to do two more. Uh, it will be in future jokes, but my brother passed away. One of, I have two brothers and a sister that I talk about, mm-hmm. and one of them had passed away, and he passed away when he was 37, 38, 38. No, yeah, he passed away. No, 37, I'm right. Sorry, I don't know why my mind was switching. He passed away at 37, and I had always said by the time I hit 37, I want to accomplish this, this, and this. And his birthday and my birthday are three days apart, and so we shot it the day after I turned 37, and it was like a full circle. And then it released like three days, like around the time where he passed away years later, but like, it was all very mapped over. Um, so for me, it was like, I'm not changing this date. This has been like what it is. We're going with it. And then let's just make it work. Yeah. I mean, yeah. do you feel like there's like a, I don't know, some power to dates? Is that why you did that? Or like, it was kind of like in his honor type thing. It was definitely in his honor. And it was also a, um, I will always, and it's uh, so interesting because that special itself at the end, if you watch, it's dedicated to a different person who passed away after it was taped. Uh, so it's just a weird thing. Um, but uh, yeah, lots a lot of, of death. death, a lot of death, a lot of death, <laughs> a lot of sad. Yeah, I mean, that's life. We all live and we all die, right? Exactly. So. I, I just like when I say I'm doing something, I'm doing it. That's basically how I am. I've always been that way. I married a stranger like that. Like I will always be like, if I'm doing this, I'm doing it. Um, and so like, if it's this date, it's not changing. It's going to be that date. That's awesome. So, and I mean, now I'm glad cause it was before the pandemic. So yeah, <laughs> in its own way, it was very needed because if you had waited until like, you could, you know, do all those crazy dance moves. Um, I it, wouldn't have been able to have three people. Yeah. Yeah. Or they would all be mad yeah. and the laugh yeah. tracks would be bad and you have to put the canned laughter in. Everyone would be like, what is happening? Um, when is your next special is going to come out? Do you know yet? Since it's like, well, it was supposed to be shot this year, um, oh. but I pushed it a year because, yeah. um, I need to do the road <laughs> like, uh, to, and I need to figure it out. Like, I don't know if I want to always have dancers, uh, or do I want to always have dancers? You know what I mean? Like there's, I don't know. Do I want to go bigger or do I want to, uh, you know, it, it is what I have no idea yet. Yeah. You just have to kind of, well, it, it's trial and error, right? So yeah. it's like maybe some shows have a lot of dancers. Some shows have no dancers and see kind of what happens. Um, I will say as a female though, it was, it, I do understand the power di- dynamic you were talking about with all those male dancers. I was a little jealous. I was like, wow, she is like a rapper. This is amazing. Um, <laughs> so I vote for more dancers. If my, okay. if my- <laughs> yeah, if I do dancers again, it'll be more, it won't be less. It won't be the same. It'll be like, yeah. guys coming on silk screens down from the stage or something like, like I, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Uh, it lane. just depends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Um, so I, I do want to ask you just like out of personal curiosity, when did you start comedy and what kind of got you into it? Cause you did have this career as a backup dancer. Um, so it's not like, you know, you were just some, some person flicking through, you know, TV being like, what will I do with my life? You kind of had this career trajectory already. Is that how you got into comedy? Oh uh, yeah. You're just watching TV and you're like, what am I going to do? Yeah. I mean, I was like out of college and I was like, wow, that communications degree got me nowhere. Um, what now? <laughs> right. Um, but you know, you kind of already had a thing going. So what, what was the inciting incident? I uh, never wanted to be a dancer. Did you really uh, not? No. Wait, so like, I, why do you dance all the time still then? I love dancing. Okay, I, mean, love I dancing. never wanted it to be a job. Oh. Um, I, but then when it, what, I, I don't regret any of the jobs that I did. 
Sure. But I was a child performing and getting paid, right? So it was it was a big part of my identity as a kid. And um, I hit like a certain age in high school where I was, I think it was junior year. I was like, I'm not dancing anymore. This is not who I am. And I like had this big like, oh, this whatever moment. Uh, and then I finished high school and was offered a tour. And I was like, yeah, what other skills do I even have? Like, I don't have any skills, so I better do this. Uh, so then I just started touring because it happened to be something that I was good at and worked hard at. It's not like I just like sat around, I did all the work, yeah. um, but it was in something that I ever wanted to do. And I think that's partially how I got all the jobs that I got because I was never stressed in the audition process as a dancer there's like callbacks and you see all these other ladies dressed in like sports bras and that's it and like there's a lot of like image thoughts and I don't know I just never cared so it was like I would mess up in the audition and still get the job because I was fun to be around oh. um and then and then that was like oh everyone thinks I'm funny oh I've always loved comedy because I was I would always I was taking like second city at like well, I got into the theater program in my freshman year of high school in Canada. And that was like, we did comedy and drama and all that stuff. But that's, I took drama over dance in a performing arts school. Um, and I was accepted for both. And then, um, cause I felt like I was already dancing enough. And then um, I took Second City in New York City and did all of that before it doesn't exist anymore. Um, and so I got into like that kind of comedy, like sketch comedy and whatnot. And then I did a few dance tours and then I just said I wanted to do stand up mm -hmm. and I moved to LA and did stand up the first week that I moved here. Um, and I was terrible. <laughs> it was the worst because I didn't know what I was doing. I basically told stories. I still tell stories. So maybe I still don't know what I'm doing. Um, but it was like three minutes of like me in the back of iOS, just being like, what is happening? Like I remember, yeah, Jeremiah was still like figuring it all out at the same time. There's a bunch of us just like, what are we doing? That's beautiful yeah. though, because now you're at the yeah. point where like these people are, you know, kind of getting the recognition that maybe they wanted at that point, you know, like oh, they're, sure. they're being validated, like, Hey, you're talented. And it's like, finally, but you have to go through that like crazy, you know, scramble. I guess I'm wondering, you know, you kind of see this pattern with people who are great at things where they'll become great at one thing and then suddenly it's easier for them to become great at other things. Do you feel like that's kind of something dance taught you, like becoming great at dance um, and like, you know, good enough to like get jobs and like continuously do it? Do you feel like that kind of fed into you I, building the skills to comedy? I think dance treat teaches you how to have discipline mm. and i think there are a lot of comedians who have no discipline well, yeah. um so like there's a big and dance teaches you how to fail you know what i mean like you're not always the best um it is a subjective sport you know because it's an artistic sport and so so is comedy it's subjective um some people are gonna think you suck and other people are gonna think you're amazing and i think that that's the same thing with dance um so where there is a technical aspect to both fields there's also a big like just what is somebody's cup of tea so i think that they do map over very well um, I like to always say, you know, I just was tired of not talking. Cause I was just like always crawling in the back. <laughs> like, like, Somebody let me speak. Yeah. It's let me call and speak. And now that's what you can do. You can dance and exactly the same. I, I don't know. I think it's, I would imagine, right. I'm not a dancer by any means. I like to dance. What? Um, Why not? Because I have one dance move. It's called twerking. And that's <laughs> all I'm good at. Like literally all okay. of it. Um, in the nightclub with the lights off, um, seducing someone, that's it. Um, past that, that's I right. have no <laughs> discernible skills. I used to Irish step dance, but that's, that's the dance nerd. dance. That's cool. That's, uh, it's one step from clogging. Uh, like it's, it's nerdy and that's fine. You know what I mean? Um, but I guess I would imagine that like, there's an amount of like distance when you're a dancer from the dance itself if you didn't choreograph it choreograph it of course, yeah. you know so it's the type of thing where it's like if someone's like that was such a shitty dance you're like that's fine I've, I got paid you know I did what I was supposed to do and you can go check whereas like with stand-up 
you wrote it, you performed it, you know, you're out here with it. So it's like a little more, I don't know, do you feel like it's more personal than dances or have they always kind of like sat in the same I line? think dance is very personal. Really? Uh, even if it's not your choreography, um, mm. it, uh, because the only way to be a good dancer, even if it's twerking, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is to relate to the song and to make it have meaning. You know, it, it, it's like an actor, even if they didn't write the words, they have to like really embody that moment to, to get it across to the audience. And I think good, that's what makes a good dancer. Um, it's not just being able to be super flexible. Um, it's about being able to like make the song connect with the audience, even if it's baby got back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, it's, it's to evoke emotion, which is the same thing as stand up. It's just, I actually am more nervous about dancing than I am about stand up. Really? Uh, for sure. Like when we started the, the positive thing, so the special opens with dance for those who haven't seen it. And uh, the positive towards it, the first time I was on stage and people were cheering, it's like this like, oh my gosh, I'm being taped. Oh my gosh, this is my first like, what if I forget everything kind of thing. But then you're like, well, it's being taped. I can be like, we're doing that again. Even though that's not how it happens at all. You can't really do that because there is a live audience, but like in your mind, there's some form of whatever. But with the dance for me, it was like, oh, fuck, people are going to see how bad I am. (laughs) Just it's that um, when you never think you're as good as other people think you are, Mm. you know? Yeah, I definitely have that about all form stand up as well as uh, dance. Would you call that like imposter syndrome? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just um, I, I will never think I'm as good as I can be. Mm, like you're always chasing your highest potential yeah oh gosh I feel like I do that too and that's I think I'm getting over that but not like over it and then like it doesn't affect me but in like I'm getting tired of the chase <laughs> you know what I mean mm-hmm. like I'm like maybe right now is all I have type thing um oh, yeah you know so but like and that's not to say like there's no room for improvement I think we're, we're all going to improve forever but like it would kind of take the fun out of it if we were just like excellent like at our highest you know uh, possible potential right off the bat because the learning is gone you know? right well and that happens um with comedians where they get super famous and then they are not funny anymore yeah. because the audience loves them just for standing there uh and luckily I'm not in that position yet so <laughs> I have to keep working hard uh which is good who knows you know what I mean like uh, I feel like a lot of specials like blow up really randomly like yeah I've definitely gotten a lot of new fans and people are awesome and I've gotten so many messages from random people my Instagram um in the special I talk about writing on the toilet seat because I did that and there that was I posted about it maybe two years ago or something like that and the amount of people who go back to make sure that that's true and yeah. like, like it is really fun to watch because then I'm like, oh, at least I know you got like 20 minutes into my special or wherever it's at. Uh, it's an interesting, uh, I like it. I like seeing all that stuff. I think it's really fun. Yeah. Anyways. What a dope metric. How many people like the toilet seat? <laughs> There's so many. It's so random, but it means like they had a search for it. It's like yeah. down my feet, you know? Yeah. That takes commitment. That doesn't just take watching it. That takes being so intrigued by the story that they went to your page, they followed you and they did the search, which is really fantastic, honestly. Yeah. Or they were just watching it and on their phone at the same time, which is something I would do. (laughs) I do stalk people while I watch them all the time. Uh, Like comedians on stage, I'll be like, who is this person? And then I'll like, (laughs) look up all their stuff. I don't have the focus for that. Like if I start looking at my phone, I'm completely taken away from like whatever they're saying. Um, and then like, if they do a callback, sometimes I, I won't, ca- you know what I mean? I feel like mm-hmm. I have to really sit down and listen. Um, maybe I just am not as talented as other people with the multitasking. No, I'm probably not listening to my full uh, potential while I'm on my phone. <laughs> it's probably saying that I'm bored in that moment. Uh, <laughs> there it is. but you're not bored enough to be completely disinterested with in them you're like I just would like to know some other facts that you're not talking about right now on stage yeah, um, and I do it with tv shows too I like stalk people randomly all the time that's so funny what um who would you say are your comedy influences or your the the people you look up to or try to resemble I don't know if I try to resemble any of them but my okay. favorite's Bill Burr really uh, I love him uh I just there's something 
about his aggression and he just makes me laugh because he talks about such a small thing that blows him up um but i've also witnessed him fail on stage and that made me like him more uh because it was like oh it does take time to get to the good part of the bit you know what i mean like it is a hard process to get to the joke that you want to get to and then you never get there right like you just shoot it and it's done but like it's like it comes out and you're like ah, i have a better tag for that i could have been <laughs> like it's never ending yeah are you going to throw out all the material that you use for this special or are you going to try to continue to build on them i would throw it out um really i think you have to you do but like how does that feel right because i'm like so far from that point it's a nightmare <laughs> yeah it's why most people's specials are their best because they have like 10 years to work on those jokes and then the second one sucks because they had a year to work on it you know what i mean um but that being said i think with the pandemic it gave me more time to write um whether i wrote every day i don't know um because there was like you know, the, the emotional roller coaster of the pandemic. Um, and then I think half of the jokes that I wrote won't necessarily be relevant in a year because of the pandemic. Like the pandemic is really screwing with some things, but it's also giving you a lot of freedom and time to not care about other things. So, um, yeah, I feel like I definitely have a new 30, brand new 30 that I like. Um, and then, you know, I'll work on doubling that. You know, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, only time will tell. Um, whenever the panty starts to end, um, it will be a little more clear what's relevant and what's not. But like, this is a historic part of, you know, our lives. So I think there's going to be a lot of people that want to hear about um, the pandemic and just like the stupid shit that happened during it. Um, whether that's like the four walls of our home or like the, the outside of the four walls of our home <laughs> this is where things get very crazy. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I think that it's it's definitely really amazing um, for someone to e- be able to even put it together a 30 during this time, um, just given how dour. Know, every joke I write is five minutes-ish. Like, I'm always like, really. I, I have a few that I've worked on that are like really short and people are like, oh, you could, you could expand on that. And I'm like, no, I need some short ones because most of my joke writing is five minute. I don't know. I just write in five minute increments. Really? Is it because uh, you start with a story? Yeah, I think it's because I am very storytellery. Uh, so most of my stuff stems from reality and uh, just things that I've experienced and stories take longer, you know? Yeah, no, 100%. It's interesting because the first time I saw you do comedy was actually in Rose Battle, mm-hmm. um, which is, I mean, you know. That's short form for By sure. nature, super short <laughs> and super mean. You so mean have said I'm always like nobody see these I'm <laughs> so mean maybe do you should I not talk about some no no you're fine I'm kidding I'm if you can you can google my name and see it it's not like oh, I can no. hide it uh it's and it's the nature of the beast roast battle is to be as mean and funny as you can you're hopefully not just mean but it everyone's under the same everyone knows what they're doing. Everyone is okay with it. What's about to happen. However mean you're going to be, someone will be equally mean back. So it's not, it's nothing to feel bad about, but, uh, in the world that we're in where people can listen to things or see things out of context, I could see some overly woke person seeing it and being like, that's not okay. And being like, well, you don't know what the show is, you know, like you don't know what it entails. Also, you don't know, like, I, that, you know, you do that pretty early in your standup career and you're just doing it because everyone else is doing it. And yeah. so you're like, don't know what you, like, I think when you're new at comedy, you say a bunch of things you shouldn't say just because you're learning what the rules are. It's like a kindergartner learning yeah. what they're allowed to do and not do. Um, you gotta, you gotta find your own personal boundaries. Yeah. I mean, in that way, it's like, thank God no one's taping your first you know, few open mics and putting them exactly. online. Like, but people oh. post them all the time. I'm like, why did you do that? Unless your grandpa just talking about like coming home and like sitting in your lazy boy, like very wholesome material. That's just like 
you know, maybe not punchy, but harmless. I, I don't see the point. You know what I mean? You have to kind of take these big swings. Um, and as far as like people taking Rose Battle out of context, I feel like that's like being a peeping Tom and seeing a guy hit a girl and being like, oh no, abuse. But then you find out it's their kink. Like that, it, like the kink is Rose <laughs> That's a great uh, example. Like uh, I'm going to steal that one day when someone <laughs> is yelling at me for being on Rose Battle. No, you are <laughs> vicious. Like <laughs> I have never seen someone be so mean. And you by far have said my favorite Rose joke I've ever heard. Um, which is, I, I won't say it verbatim, people can go and look you up, and I think it's probably online, but the thing you said to Cole Alexander about his, <laughs> oh, the berry, oh, I remember that moment, I was like, oh, wait, there's a tear of comedy I ha- <laughs> may never be capable of, <laughs> and it's what and Cole and I are really good friends, like, I I, like and so um, I, the roast battles I like doing, I've done both, I like roasting people I'm friends with, because I know they don't care. Yeah. Uh, like Cole and I were drinking before we got up and we were drinking after. Like it, did it, it was just a fun, like, here we go. Um, and Cole's a great roaster. Uh, and then I've had to battle people I don't know. And I don't like that. That's, that's I, my personal thing is I'm not doing that anymore. I'm, I'll roast friends, but I'm not roasting strangers. Um, and Why by strangers, that? I mean like just in the community that I don't like hang out with. Yeah. What, why is that though? Like what have you found, um, isn't fulfilling about roasting a stranger? It feels weird. It feels mean. You know what I mean? Cause you don't know them. You don't know what they're okay with or not okay with. Um, and then usually those are the people like you have to Google their, you know, comedy and all of that. And so you're roasting things that you've heard them say, but then there's other people who also give you like dirt sheets where they're like here's all my problems and then you're like what and then they ask for yours and I have given it to them because they asked but I also am like wait am I doing the work for you like "Mm." and or also now I know what you're gonna get me on like the things that I give like it's just a weird um thing and then also there are people who don't write their own rose jokes like it's all it's all a weird you know so if you're roasting your friends you know what you're getting it's more fun. Yeah. Yeah. I I hang out with a sensitive bunch of people. So I feel like it would be almost worse if I roasted one of my friends, because like, we know so much of the core, you know what I mean? Like the things that really like, like, you know what not to touch too, though. You know what I mean? But then you also know what they're going to like. I mean, I talked about my brother passed away on this already. The amount of people who roast me on him passing away every time, you know, but like, you know, it's coming. So it's like, all right, you're going to roast me on my dead brother, my dead dad. Let's go. (laughs) Like, I know it's coming. You just kind of prep before. Do you ever um, sit down with your friends before and be like, okay, what are you going to roast me on? No, 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 no. No, Uh, Like with the Cole one specifically, uh, we both did the improv before it, like stand up sets. And so uh, a mutual friend of ours was like, oh, you guys are roasting. And then I like, Cole had already told him the jokes that he was going to hit me with. And I had told the guy, I was like, oh, these like, but we didn't, that guy never told us what the other one was doing. And it was just like, okay, have fun guys. And I was like, oh, okay. That's gonna be fun. Cause you know, both. All right, let's party. Yeah. That's so crazy. I mean, I think that part of the fun is kind of hearing the rose people point out about you. You know, there is something endearing about like someone spending that much time trying to, to kind of make your life into something like vicious or mean, you know, you're like, oh, thank you. It's a um, writing exercise for sure. It's yeah. It's yeah. a full exercise. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the reason why I'm surprised that you, you just do these like ready-made five minute sets because roasting is so punchy mm-hmm. that I would imagine you would like hit those one-liners all the time. But like, and I mean, you do obviously like your sets and your stories are punchy. Right. Um, I, I guess maybe I'm talking from personal experience. Every time I've ever tried to tell a story, it ends up being 30 minutes too long. It, it will be 35 minutes and it'll be 30 minutes too long. Um, For stand up, I think it's learning how to tell the story because it's not, it's not storytelling. It's not how, um, it's not by timeline, it's by topic. So, yeah. like, if the story is about you and your ex, um, as an example, you're not doing um, the first date and all of the things that happened on the first day, you're doing all of the times he didn't, uh, he didn't put his socks in the hamper. And then you're like, you're, it's topical instead of, uh, time-wise. 
Yeah, totally. Because you're looking that, for the, the parts that you can like immediately joke on. Mm -hmm. um, I guess after you started doing stand up and you kind of like felt that first, like, oh, bomb, you know what I mean? Like the first, like, <laughs> ah, dagger to the chest. Um, how long did it take you to like get get good? You know, like when you got like your first laugh and then like, oh, you got your first laugh consistently. Like how long did that take? I got a lot of laughs. And I think most comedians do too. I got a lot of laughs in the beginning. Uh -huh. I think all comedians start kind of good um, because their friends are there or people are nicer or they're brought up to like, there's something in the fearlessness when you first get up of not bombing. It doesn't mean it's structurally amazing. It's like a, the stage presence is good and uh, they're funny um, premises. You know, like you can find the, the ideas in them. Then there's like a middle ground where you kind of suck and then you get good again because you either choose to stay or leave. Um, personally, the first time I bombed, really hard. I just did another mic immediately after it was like, you don't have a choice. You're going to fix that. That was because you did this, this, or this, you know, like, you know, I treat it like a job. Yeah. You just kind I of really engineer it and then like bring that, that discipline to it, yeah. which is awesome. Yeah. A lot of, I, I do know a lot of comedians who, you know, they, they do lack that. Like they'll be super funny as people too. That's like the most heartbreaking times where you're like, you meet someone who's like <laughs> so funny, you know, when you're just talking and you're like, damn it, you have, ugh, you're so natural, you know? And then they are just like, I just want to sleep today. And you're like, no, go get better. <laughs> well, that's why people don't rise. That's literally why people don't make it is because it's a business. You know what I mean? Like you can be, there are some phenomenal comics who will never be seen by anybody else, but the little local community because they're not playing they're not reaching out for more and maybe they don't want it that's the other thing is there's a lot of comics who don't who don't actually want to be comedians as much as they say they do they don't want to do the work and they don't want to hear all of the online meanness and like all the other things that come with like there's negatives and positives towards it as a job you know yeah do you mostly always enjoy it or is it kind of like a, a back and forth I mostly always enjoy it. And if I don't, I drink more. <laughs> Does drinking help you on stage or with writing? I just like drinking. Uh, let's start with that. I'm Irish okay. and Scottish, so that's a thing. There it is. Uh, I enjoy it. I've never um, been to the point where uh, I can't wake up the next morning and do my job or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I'm not, I'm a responsible alcoholic, I would sure. say. Um, uh, I like writing drunk. I do like, no, buzz, not super wasted. Yeah. And then I like rereading it the next day, completely sober and being like, what the fuck was that? Um, some, some people smoke that. pot. I don't smoke pot. Some people do that. Some people, I also write a lot of times on hikes and I'm not drunk hiking. Uh, so like sometimes I'm drinking, sometimes I'm not. But yeah. I do like yeah. drinking before stand up, but I'll never have more than two beers if it's a show. Fair enough. What's your drink choice? Not rose butter. Rose butter. I'll drink a bunch. Um, <laughs> I like I like Stella. I like I like beer. A good Stella. Yeah. That I mean, honestly, hats off to you. I I drink like one sip to two sips of wine, and I'm slurring on stage. Like uh, I've yeah. I, I'm a very anxious person. I'll be like, mm, like I'll sound like a drunk mom after a PTA meeting, and it's just like it's too much. Like I'm like, okay, I'm not. So anytime I see people like pounding like Bert Kreischer and stuff, like how much he drinks and stuff, I'm like dude, I wish I had that tolerance. Like I'm half But I think it's tolerance. Yeah. I think it comes yeah. from like your background and how much you drank, you know, on the reg. Yeah. Yeah. I would be drinking even if I wasn't at a show. So <laughs> I'd be drinking more probably. Yeah. Um, the fact that I have to stand up and speak is stopping me from drinking. <laughs> yeah. We can bring the alcohol on stage. That is That's amazing. Like that to me is part of the beauty in comedy. Like comedy, you could do whatever you want. You could be sober. You could be an alcohol, you could be anything and uh, be on stage and doing, it. there's no no's in comedy, which I like. Yeah. I really like that. It really is just like no holds barred. Like do, do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And, um, then, so and if people like it, great. <laughs> yeah, and people are liking it. Um, I do want to ask you kind of as like a, a final question. Um, mm -hmm. What advice would you give to future little budding comedians? Ooh, I don't have any. No. Uh. <laughs> Wait, I'm like, <laughs> Wait, get out of my stage time. Um, I don't know. Like, do you, well, you've been doing comedy for a while. What do you think? What would you say to somebody? Oh, well, I mean, here, here's the, the interesting thing about this podcast. I show up 
every time, right? And that that bleeds through. The reason why I'm asking you is because I want your you know unique perspective. I mean, I think that, and that's why I ask because like people who especially get to your point, they all have different perspectives on like what's actually important, right? Some people are like, fuck okay. it, do whatever, you know. I guess to answer that, then I was uh, with a bunch of girls. There was a girl comedy um, mic last night, and it was only women. And we were talking about comedy and careers and all of this. And uh, one of them was like, I guess my biggest advice in the beginning would be figure out what you want out of comedy Mm. and be honest with yourself. Like, do you want to do it for a job or do you want to do it because you like hanging out with people or do you want to do it because um, you just like having fun? Like, what is it that you're, there's so many different reasons that people get into stand up comedy. Um, part of it is the community is so cool. You know what I mean? Like, it's like why people still do sports when they're adults, but don't join the team. Like the, like, don't try to become professionals. Right. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with both of those parties living in the same world. Um, so I would say, you know, figure out which one you want, cause then you can attack it from a different perspective. And it doesn't mean it can't change, right? Like you could start off with being like, I don't want to do this for a living. I just do this for fun. There's a freedom in that. Right. And then there's also like, I want this to be my job. So then you work at it all the time. You know, it just depends on what you want. Yeah. Did you know from the start, you were like, I want specials. I want to hit the road. I want to do these things. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And that's why you're like, all right, all the time drinking doesn't matter. Gonna write hiking. I have to drink every day. I will for the craft. (laughs) What a beautiful excuse. Uh, Kim, you, you are awesome. I think you're super funny. You're so Um, sweet. I'm, I'm being serious. Like when, when I was a, you know, a little baby comedian, which I honestly I still kind of am, you were the first person I saw that was a girl that I thought was funny. And I was like, Oh, well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, that's why I wanted you to be on the podcast. I um, feel like the first time I saw you do stand up was at Kill Tony's. Yeah. That was bad. <laughs> that was, <laughs> I that. Um, that's just the first time I saw you. That, that was show's set up to make stage. you not do well. Yeah, no. Oh, wait, no. oh, first time ever. And you yeah. see, you're one of those people. You posted it in that you didn't post it, but the world posted it. No, <laughs> I had. <laughs> Kim, honestly, I had no context for what I was doing at all. <laughs> I love it. I, I love didn't it. know it was filmed. I didn't know. That's what the show said. is based on. That's so good. It, it was, whew. <laughs> um, <laughs> But whatever, I get to know the first day that I started comedy. That's the only benefit of it. And it's it's nice to see progress, but it's really, um, it would be difficult not to progress from that set, honestly. Um, it was a, <laughs> a big low. Um, but anyways, I really appreciate you coming on. Where can the people find you? Um, what upcoming projects do you have? How can they keep up? So I mostly post on uh, Kim.McVicker on my Instagram. Uh, most of my social media is Kim.McVicker. Um, and I have a website, KimMcVicker.com. Uh, so like all of my shows and tour dates are always on there. And then I'm starting in, well, starting, it's out, uh, a podcast with Handred CV. And it's called I Don't Wanna Wait. Um, and it's uh, just us riffing about Dawson's Creek episode by episode. Um, because we both have been talking about it so much behind everybody's back. that We were like, we should talk about it in public. Um, There's no shame in still liking Dawson's Creek. Uh, And I'm learning a lot through it uh, because it really brings up like high school. So you're like, like, oh yeah, that happened to me. Or did you have a teacher that tried to rape a bunch of kids? Because those are like Dawson's Creek episodes. (laughs) It's just like weird uh, storylines. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. Um, definitely check the, all those out and all of Kim's links will of course be in the description. So if you're driving or hiking or doing any, uh, doing any of those things, um, you don't have to stop. You can just come back. And I mean, pull click. over if you're driving, but yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. They don't have to stop. You know, oh. they don't have to start scribbling on a random mm-hmm. piece of paper or a Chipotle napkin as they're on the highway. Um, you can wait and then you, like you can Chipotle? follow up. Huh? Do you like Chipotle? I love Chipotle. Really? Yeah. We, yeah. I love anything that is carbs. You know I, do, I, mean? I do too. They just never cook their rice. And oh. that's their main thing is like finish cooking your rice. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> I feel like I specifically like their rice. So maybe something's oh, so crunchy texture. I like the crunch. Uh, that's not, that, cooked. That's not that, cooked. That is a bad measurement for rice. I never realized Chipotle had bad rice and I just actively enjoy something that's bad. That is 
terrifying to me. Am I cooking rice wrong? Because my rice tastes much my you just rice. don't finish cooking your rice. That's okay. You like it crunchy. That's I don't cook rice well either. I'm not good at it because I don't like waiting. That's, uh, yeah, crunchy rice sounds disgusting. Um, but in practice, thank you, Chipotle. Um, mm-hmm. But everyone, definitely check out Kim's um, special uh, Please Notice Me on Amazon Prime. It is awesome. Um, and if you want more of me, Haley Hackett, feel free to follow me on Instagram at Haley Hackett Talks. And if you want more good talks with good people, follow us on Instagram at Good Talk With and listen to more podcasts on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, all of it. Anyways, we'll talk next week. Thanks. Thanks, Haley.